building for eternity on the foundation of Christ. I think the when you talk about the culture of a, an organisation, it's like talking about the personality of an organisation. If you were to take a group of people and you were to imagine their their culture in terms of manifested in one person, what would that person be like? Would they be neurotic or would they be positive or would they be hopeful? Um, it's how the organisation corporately responds to individuals. It's the things that drive an organisation to make the decisions it does. I think generally people mean how they see people in the church behaving. The way we behave is of course tied up with our values and our beliefs. You see the outworkings of that in the way um, in the way we do things. Language or the images or metaphors they use to describe themselves, the narratives that they have about themselves and about the world, the kind of agreed norms. Um, often people sign up to them without even realising, just being by being part of a group of people. It's often unwritten. Uh, I think quite often it's unobserved. But I think it makes a massive difference to where you live or where you work or where you socialise. I worked at uh, a previous employers that had a culture of me. Um, it was all based around maximising the individual's benefit, um, quite often to the detriment of others or the customers. Um, I think of one example where I was working in a previous place of employment before I became a minister. And I remember there being a sort of sense of tension and anxiety. And there was this constant sense of we're not doing a good enough job, we're rubbish, we're low in the the league tables. There's a slight blame culture there and it caused some work workers to sort of disengage and others to slog their guts out but resent it and, and it was difficult. It, it called itself work hard, play hard. That transpired to be go out every month and get drunk and misbehave. Over Lent they had a massive difficulty with me abstaining from alcohol um, and I only lasted six months but I think that was more about cultural fit than it was about anything else. As an HR professional I've worked in a number of places where I've come across toxic cultures and the one that springs to mind which was really toxic was uh, it was a small group of people they were physically isolated in the workplace they were all absolutely brilliant at what they did and very, very professional in their work. But cliques started to form between them and a uh, bullying culture grew up. We started to find that anybody knew that we put into that workplace didn't really last five minutes and they would leave. Um, so I think that the features of a truly inspiring culture are ones that help people perform to their best. It's a caring and nurturing culture, and one that shows, uh, certainly in the church context, to the world that there is a way of living that is Christ-like. An exciting place to be, a positive place to be, a place that's uplifting and energising, that whenever you uh, come away from that kind of gathering or uh, teamwork, you kind of left wanting more. Because while you're in it, you feel that you're able to do more than you can, you can on your own. You, you feel like you're growing. You can feel yourself growing. You feel yourself pushing forwards together. A lot of energy and a lot of passion. Um, you'll see people exploring new ideas and trying things out with a, um, a certain amount of confidence. Um, and you'll see people using their strengths and their gifts. It's a, it's a place where there's a, a high levels of love and trust and, and respect uh, and I think that's so important. It's, it's not just about what is achieved or, or the function of the group, it's also about the atmosphere, the love, the kind of depth of relationship that goes with that. It was the culture of CBC that brought me back to Christ. Uh, when I had uh, children with um, challenges, it was the folk at CBC and the love that they showed them that demonstrated to me there was a better way of doing things. 
I think a good starting point is with yourself. So one of the dangers is we can blame other people. So that person epitomizes everything that's wrong with this culture. And we fixate on that, not realizing that we're contributing to the toxicity in the culture simply by being resentful and critical and so on. And the only person we can really change uh, with any degree of success is ourselves. And so that's where we need to start and start modeling the culture that we want to see. I think there's a consciousness that's needed around culture. I think that we have to be conscious that uh, culturally we have to be seen to be Christ's followers. That from a church perspective we have to be noticeably different. To be trying out new things but also to be encouraging other people to try out new things and supporting them when it doesn't work. I think we need to collaborate with each other, draw on each other's strength. So I think we need to talk to each other and listen to each other a lot. And we need to be listening to God. I think it helps to have an image or picture of the culture that we want. It helps to be able to name and articulate what is wrong with the culture that we're in. Uh, and I think sometimes it helps to have role models. Obviously, ultimately, as Christians, that's Christ, Jesus. Um, but sometimes it might be p particular people who who model that to us particularly well, whether within our culture or outside of our culture. When I started to come to CBC, there were a couple of individuals who demonstrated in the way that they spoke and they acted and the way that they behaved all of the time that they were Christ followers. And I think that's not a bad model to follow.